let us pray. Father Lord in heaven, we want to appreciate you so much for how you have blessed us in diverse ways. Out of the abundant blessings, we have brought a little to show appreciation. We thank you for the messages we have received through songs. Even as we read from your word, we ask that you open our hearts and our minds to be able to comprehend that which you have for us this morning. Use me as your instrument. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. Our text this morning is taken from John chapter 17. John chapter 17. We are going to read a verse, that is verse 17. John chapter 17, verse 17. We're going to read from New International Version. The word of the Lord says, Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. This is the word of the Lord. We thank God for the cooking week of prayer and fasting, which we are running up today. And we are considering the theme, the authority of God's word in holy living. The authority of God's word in holy living. That is to say you cannot live a holy life without God's word. Hallelujah. There is power in God's word. One day, a son asked his father, he said, how big is God? And suddenly, an aeroplane was passing, and the father now asked the son, how big is that aeroplane? And the son said, dad, that aeroplane is small. I can hold it in my hands. The next day, the father took the son to the airport. When the boy saw an aeroplane, then the father asked, how big is this aeroplane? He said, dad, this is very big. Hallelujah. And the father said, if you are far from God, you will see him as a small God. But once you are close to God, you will see him as a big God. Hallelujah. How big is God? We are talking about the authority of God's word in holy living. The word of God is God because we cannot separate God from his word. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 1 verse 1, In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. Hallelujah. The word of God is living and active. When we are talking about the word of God here, you know in Genesis, the word, the spoken word of God, let there be and there was, hallelujah. Let there be light and there was light. We are talking about the living word of God, which is Jesus Christ. And also the written word of God, which is the Bible. So the authority of God's word in holy living. The word of God has power to save. The word of God has power to sanctify. Has power to purify. Has power to deliver. Has power to heal. Has power to regenerate. To transform. And to demolish strongholds. Hallelujah. From the passage we read. Jesus, before he ascended to heaven, he prayed. He said, oh, Father, sanctify, glorify your son. The work you have given me, I have revealed myself to the world. I have given them your word. He prayed for himself. He prayed for the disciples. He prayed for the believers. He prayed for even those that will believe. Hallelujah. Sanctify them by thy word. Your word is what? Truth. The word of God has power 
to deliver. On day one, we talk about the word as what? The word of God is described as what? As in English is a simile. Described as what? Sword. So sword, as it is read in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 17, is one of the weapons. The word of God is one of the weapons. You know, as believers, we are in a war zone. Hallelujah. And we need weapons. The word of the Lord is a sword. It's one of the offensive weapons. Because we have the defensive and the offensive weapons. So it's one of the offensive weapons. So there is authority. There is power in the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. The two we talk about the word of God as fire and hammer. Hallelujah. The word of God is described as fire as hammer. You know, functions of the word as fire. It ignites the soul. It burns the conscience. It purifies the life. For a soul, for a gold to shine, it must pass through fire. Hallelujah. So, it is described as fire because it purifies. It burns the conscience. It illuminates the mind. It energizes the will. It warms the heart to the glory of God. The word of God is described as a hammer. God's word is like a hammer because it is able to judge the hardest of heart. It rouses and strengthens the life and conscience, crushing everything that is evil within the heart. It's able to infiltrate into the deepest part of man's heart and bring to light a motive, thoughts, and attitudes that will bring glory to his name. On the three, we talk about the word heals and delivers. Hallelujah. There is power in the word of God. You remember when Peter was going to the temple to pray. A beggar was begging. Then Peter said, gold and silver, I don't have. But in the name of Jesus, stand and walk. Hallelujah. It has power to deliver. It has power to save. Jesus Christ, during his earthly ministry, he healed so many people. He made the blind to see, the lame to walk. There is power in the word of God. So involving God's word, very, very important. Therefore, we talk about the word of God as the seed. The word of God is described as seed. Seed in different places of the scripture. Seed is very crucial for every farmer. When you have good seed, you have good harvest. For every Christian, the word of God demands utmost attention for a high yield. Prepare your heart to access the word. If you don't open your heart, there is no how God's word can enter to produce. Meditate on it day and night. Meditation is reading and thinking on the word over and over until it is saturates in your mind. Hallelujah. It's not just to read, but you read. You think about it over and over and again. No wonder Jesus gave a parable that a farmer went out to what? To sow. So the seed that fell on the good ground, it grows up and gives a lot of yields. Our heart, our heart, we need to open our heart, even as the word of God comes, so that it will continue to grow and give a lot of fruits. Day five, we talk about the word of God as light and lamb. Hallelujah. 
In Genesis chapter 1 verse 3, the spoken word of God, let there be light and there was light. Which represents, so light here represents wisdom. It represents understanding and divine revelation. It, it reveals truth and dispels darkness. Darkness here, it means ignorance, sin. So the word of God dispels ignorance. The word of God dispels sin. Hallelujah. Light. It is lamp. So lamps here suggest illumination for the immediate path ahead. Guiding daily decisions and actions. So the concept of word of God as light and lamp includes spiritual guidance. When you are walking in the light, you will not fall. If there are obstacles or things on the way, there are things you need to avoid. Because of the presence of light, there is power in the word of the Lord, faith and strengthening. It also helps us in transformation and protection. In the six, we talk about word of God as water. Jesus as clear, fresh water cleanses our bodies. God's word washes us clean deep down inside our souls. It purifies our thoughts, scrubs our motives, and cleanses our consciences. Hallelujah. The word of God as water does the following. Life giving. If you are thirsty, you need water, right? It quenches. So water, very important. Study the word. It will help you. It will refresh you and transform you. Hallelujah. And the seven, Christ, the active word. Christ, the active word. So God the Father, God the Son, the Holy Spirit is all about one God revealing himself in three different ways and times. So the holiness of the believer is the presence of the Son of God who is the word of God. If you have the Son of God, you have the word of God, which is the living word of God. If you have the Bible, you have the word of God, which is the written word of God. Hallelujah. They have power. They have authority. Very, very important. The word of God will help us to live holy lives. So only the knowledge based on God's word will produce a genuine experience of God and his power. The reason for this is that the power of God is revealed and experienced in his word. To know his word is to know and experience his power. So there are a few things here. Let me quickly mention them as we conclude. The word of God has power to reveal. The word of God has the power to reveal to us certain things that we could not know in any other way. For example, how and when the world was created. It is revealed in the word of God. The reason man is the way he is. The, the, the true nature of God and what happens to us even after we die is all found in the word of God. Number two, power to refute. The word of God has power to refute. In 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 16, God's word is a standard against which all philosophies, ideas, and proposed solutions for the human condition can be measured for accuracy. Hallelujah. So for God's word approves it, we can run with it. The third thing is that the word of God has power to reproduce. That's why we talk about seed. In Luke chapter 8 verse 11. Jesus said that the word of God was like a seed. Like a seed. Very, very important. The word, when planted in an honest and obedient heart, 
can produce physical acts which can be seen and felt. Hallelujah. The fourth thing is that the word of God has the power to redirect every complete life change, every turn around. Is there in the word of God. Many people have improved or changed their lives in a significant way based on a desire to improve. The fifth thing is that the word of God has the power to revive. The word of God is able to bring comfort and hope. Even when you are discouraged, when you hear the word, when you study the word, you will be encouraged as well. You will be strengthened and encouraged. The power to reward. The word of God has the power to reward. The word reveals who God is. What he desires. And what he is preparing to give to those who believe and obey. It is one thing to believe. It is another thing to obey. No wonder the word of the Lord says in Ezra. Chapter 10 verse 7. Ezra devoted himself in studying the word of God, in teaching the word of God, and in obeying the word of God. So it is not enough to study. When you study, you should obey, and then you teach. Even if you don't open your mouth to teach, as you leave it, people will learn. Hallelujah. One kaka say, I don't know how to read. But as you read the word, I will see it on you and I will learn. Hallelujah. Then lastly, the word of God has the power to get us ready to prepare our hearts for eternity. The Bible says that we will all meet God in one way or the other. Either we die before he comes and face him in judgment or when Jesus returns and we will face judgment. So either way, we must be ready. The word shows us how to prepare for that great day in our lives. The day of the Lord. So therefore, the word of God, for us to see the power of the word of God, three things are required. Number one, read the word. Number two, respond to the word in obedience. Number three, spread the word. Preach it, teach it to the glory and honor of his name. How powerful is your name, O oh Lord. How powerful is your word, O oh Lord. How powerful is your name. How powerful is your name? How powerful is your name? Oh Lord, one more time. How powerful is your word? Oh 